Welcome back. You're listening to Radio Taiwan International. I'm Michelle, and this is Geek Out. What's your cup of tea? What tickles your fancy? What floats your boat? Join us as we share passions from people in Taiwan and around the world. So, guys, in the studio today, I have my very good friend, Tyler Gelbar. Oh, hello. Thank you for having me on the show, Michelle. <laughs> and what are we going to geek out about today? So um, I have been, uh, just as a side hobby, I have been working on game design. Okay. Like tabletop games, yeah. something where you can include a group of people all gather on a table, maybe grab a few beers, grab some chips, and just try to like... Try to try to find the end of the game, so to speak. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. So, listeners, if this is the first time you're tuning in uh, and you don't know much about me specifically, I am a huge nerd. I wear the nerd badge with pride. Um, I love tabletop games, and specifically, we've talked in the past about Dungeons and Dragons, which tends to be the I think the most famous game. Oh, I'd say yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's at the top. Yes, it's at the top of the list. They just came out with a movie. Um, that's actually really good. You guys should go see it. In in my opinion. Oh, it's really. If you if you have played D and D, uh, definitely go see it. If you haven't seen it, um, it's 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 just a wonderful, fun right. fantasy it's a, movie. It's, it's a hilarious. Yeah. It's a hilarious fantasy movie. It's, it, they do a really good job. Yeah. So Dungeons and Dragons is probably the best example most people have heard of when we when we're talking about something like a TTRPG or a tabletop role playing game. Mm -hmm. um, so, but besides Dungeons and Dragons, there's a whole world of games out there. There's a lot of different games. There's systems. a lot of different games that you can play on a tabletop while role playing a character. Yeah. Right? So, um are there any are there any other ones that are I guess more well known besides Dungeons and Dragons that you can come up with? If you are looking to like kind of get out of D&D &D, or if you're looking for something a little bit more simple, D&D &D can take a lot of time to set it, up. It does. It does. Yeah. But uh, if you're looking for something a little bit different, there's Powered by the Apocalypse. Yeah. Uh, which is a system at, in a nutshell that's like where you use two six-sided dice mm -hmm. to indicate like a fail, mixed success, or um, or a total success, mm -hmm. uh, and that's also another tabletop storytelling game. Yep. Uh, and then there's also another system that I've been getting into a little bit, looking at recently. Oh, it can get quite complicated, but at base, at its core, um, you roll six-sided dice, and that gives you a pass success fail and that as well too mm -hmm. um so that's called blades in the dark oh yeah. well the name is very intriguing it's very intriguing <laughs> and uh it looks like it looks like a lot of fun okay so blades in the dark uh we have the apocalypse system yeah that's oh, so yeah. these are those are two different systems mm -hmm. and then there are different uh entirely different settings yep. which come with their own ways to get you uh, into the into specific kinds of story and to get you playing specific kinds of characters within those stories yes. and so those those are two different like mechanics yes. that that can branch out into different right. settings so base mechanics and then different games that are based on those mechanics using yep. those mechanics mm -hmm. so Tyler and I both are game masters or dungeon masters <laughs> and what what that what does that mean so a game master is where you are the person at the head of the table mm -hmm. and your job is to bring the story provide rules provide the rules <laughs> and the most important part uh i i'm i'm such especially when it comes to the rules i'm always right? just like oh there are suggestions right they're only suggestions right. you know, there's always well, the yeah. rule of cool so there's always a rule of cool right. no matter what no matter mm -hmm. what dm you are that should always be of number course. one rule uh but for dms your job is to um depending on the game system that you're working with it's to maintain the rules are there it's to bring the personalities of non-player characters yes uh, uh provide the setting, come up with problems that the players need to solve, tricks and puzzles that the players need to work with, and basically provide the setting, the world, and the challenges that the players will need to discuss amongst right. themselves. What they will face. Yeah, game. correct. Yeah. So I think a lot of people's experiences of tabletop uh, role-playing games are very dependent on the, the I guess, the, the enthusiasm, the skill. <gasps> Of the game master or the oh, yeah. master, the GM or the DM, yeah, um, because obviously that's the that's the person who is providing the er, the world for yeah. you. Yeah, it can it can be quite challenging and um, to be the DM, and uh, sometimes it can be a little <laughs> bit nerve wracking, especially yeah. especially if you're just getting into it for the first time, because it does seem like a lot of pressure. But once you get into it, and once you once you get the ball rolling, the hardest part to, is to start. But once you get into it, then it can be quite rewarding, and you can also learn from that as well too. Yeah, so. it's it's obviously everything is has a learning curve. Oh, absolutely. So in as far as just using Dungeons and Dragons as an example, mm -hmm. uh, to become a DM, you can follow the books. There are 
pre-built modules that you can just buy mm-hmm. uh, from, I believe, Wizards of the Coast and yep. various other independent makers. Yep. And with that, you can just follow the instructions, basically, on how to run a game. Yeah. And they're fairly well written with anticipation to what your players are going to be doing. Mm-hmm. So as long as you follow the the rule book or the, uh, the, the module, you're pretty much going to have a good time, I think. Yeah, right? you're going to have a fun time. And then there's people who homebrew. <laughs> yeah, yes both uh-huh. Tyler and I love oh homebrew. yeah that is definitely a, a playground for people who are more creative mm-hmm. and yes you're you are working off base mechanics of a game yep so and and base rules very basic rules but the it's a sandbox so you create your own world as the dungeon master or game master and um mm-hmm. your players are you know then tossed into your your everything right yeah <laughs> it's that meme where what's his name uh Sc- scourge skirt scourge oh scourge. oh from scourge? oh from, um, from ragnarok from ragnarok yeah. where uh hella comes in yeah. and she looks she kills everyone else there and it was that guy scourge yeah, that guy. yeah, scourge. yeah, yeah. scourge yeah. basically is showing some you know some babes uh, and he's like they're like oh hey what's up and he's like hello welcome behold my stuff <laughs> it's just a hodgepodge and it's of... just of all your favorite things yes. just piled up in a corner and mm-hmm. it can get yeah i think that's a fun part of being a dm because you end up taking the stuff that you really enjoy from like a variety of sources mm-hmm. like anything harry potter video games books movies yes. a clip a meme that you saw once yeah, feel and free then you to just toss like it in there <laughs> yeah and you kind of like frankenstein it together mm-hmm. sometimes absolutely and throw it in front of your players and hope that that frankenstein turns into I- i've always found that if especially the players catch the Franken like like they recognize yeah, the yeah. Um, the the pieces of Frankenstein it that's that part's also entertaining that's also <laughs> fun and I think that's I think it's a fun part when you watch like a movie or a scene and then in your head when you watch it you're like wow like what would I do if I was there? Like, mm-hmm. what would I do if I were in that situation? Right. Like, Voldemort, he'd get, we all know he'd get a swift punch to the face. Yes. Like, Avada could AK-47. Right. You know, <laughs> just like, why are we sticking, why are we doing that? Why wasn't a yeah. shoe thrown at that guy? <laughs> Honestly, some people really deserve shoes in the face. Yes. And so it is kind of fun f- to bring those situation scenarios or characters or elements to your own games in homebrew mm-hmm. and then have your players react, like uh, yeah. react that way and be like, oh, this is going to be so satisfying to do that. <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. So your games mm-hmm. that you homebrew are actually not just based on, you know, Dungeons and Dragons rules. Right. What are you doing for your tables? So actually, just for fun as a hobby, I did come up with like two other different game systems. Yes. And three, actually. And the third one we're actually playing now, especially like last summer, last fall, uh, I had been playing other video games and I enjoyed them. I like their premise. And I... The Which first... video games were they? So the first video game is called Cult of Simulator. Okay. It's really challenging. It's hard. Oh. It's a card-based game with timers and clocks, and it's oh, no. so complicated. But like the the artwork is very. It's minimalistic, for it, but it's very engaging. And the premise of the game is that you're trying to like become a cultist and achieve an enlightenment and maneuver uh, at the scene of the occult. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting. Uh, and then the second game that I played was. <laughs> can't remember <laughs> inscription oh there it is yeah there it is Whew, sorry inscription with a y instead of an i in the middle ah. and so that's also a card-based game oh. that one's a little bit darker that one's also very fun oh and so, oh you're talking yeah. to the right person i love dark stuff you oh like lovecraftian absolutely yes. oh mm-hmm. yep, 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 yep 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 <laughs> and so those those are fun but those are like single player games yes. and i love the i love the premise i love the setting and I wanted, and I think that would be really, f- I, th- I thought it would be really fun to try to bring that to a tabletop setting mm-hmm. and to come up with mechanics that players could look for and also to establish, to change player goals so that it could become a collaboration. Right. Rather and than so, a single player. Yeah. yeah. And so that's what I did with, with those two games. And yeah, it was interesting trying to adapt a video game and trying to change Make it, it on over a tabletop to reformat it to fit your local <laughs> kitchen table and so um yeah so that was actually quite fun and okay. then for the third game that one was actually and that's the most important one because that's going to be for a full-blown campaign that i'm going to run and so for that Soon. one i needed to pull things from D D and powered by the apocalypse and some elements from blades in the dark so that i could fit the story that i wanted to go for okay yeah so yes we're talking high nerddom guys yeah like, oh, yeah we're, we're actually taking yeah. elements from different game system game mm-hmm. mechanic systems and then adapting them to our own use our own table yep which can get pretty complicated i would imagine <laughs> <laughs> oh my it has been 
Oh, I was like, mm. you know what? How hard could it be? <laughs> and then I did it. And then I'm like, oh, God, it's over. It can be quite <laughs> overwhelming, especially when because one, you're not only just creating a whole system and mechanics where like with some of the other games, Blades in the Dark, it is a it's over 100 pages. The entire book oh, itself wow. is. And so, yeah, so I'm just starting to read through it. And I'm like, oh. I can't, I can't do that. I can't. Oh, first of all, I'm just going to I'm going to put it out there, guys. I don't do well if you give me a bunch of words on paper. Yeah. I can't. It just doesn't it doesn't <laughs> you, absorb. your eyes glaze over exactly. and then you stop seeing words, you start seeing shapes and then <laughs> It's exactly what happens. And then the last I, thing you see is the back of your eyelids. Exactly, because yeah. I'm falling asleep. Yeah. So the way that I learned how to tabletop game is just by watching other people play it. it, it yeah, because uh, then you see how they do it, you yeah. learn, yeah. And then I sat in on a game, I played it, and then I started understanding how the mechanics work. Yeah. But if you had given me a rule book, I can't, I can't. It's just not. It's just, it, it's also <laughs> quite daunting. And there's only so much that you can retain and remember. That's why right. you have a book and not people telling you what the rules are. Because mm-hmm. if it really were that easy, you would just remember it off the top of your head. But if you play a few games, then, then you get it. Right? Then you start to, then mm-hmm. it becomes a reaction. Yeah. And I think that that's when you know that you've hit a certain level in the learning curve, so to speak, yes. is when things become reactionary mm-hmm. or they become intuitive, right. where you sometimes the rules don't necessarily cover everything. Yeah. And so then you kind of begin to intuit to it what a situation requires what are the stakes and what things need to be accomplished Mm -hmm. and that that's a fun part right yeah when you get to that level where um where things you're no longer scrambling around looking for Mm -hmm. elements to like numbers what does this statistic mean on your character sheet or whatever well there are now applications where either on your phone or on a computer Mm -hmm. where they do all your math for you you just click on you know whatever statistics you're supposed to yeah. Roll for, right? Yeah. So if it's stealth, you click stealth and then it just comes up with your number. You it say, shows you what it is. Yeah, 15. Like, and then as a DM or yeah. a GM, then we tell them whether they succeeded at the task or not. Yep. Right. That's correct. So it is, a, it is much easier now than it was, what, like, oh my God, years for ago? the first editions and stuff. They oh, had so man. many rules. You needed rulers mm-hmm. and you needed to draw things out in order to make sure something could even just like hit. Right. It was like, you. I think you needed to go, what? Okay. Calcul- my math calculator. is garbage. I'm like, calcul- <laughs> well, de- calculus, but also geometry. Oh, no. Like, you need to have, like, it seems like as if, I, I haven't played it. I'm And I'm I'm hyperbolizing here. There right. are definitely some diehard fans out there. But, like. Yeah, come it, at us. Come at us on our social media. Right. Which edition of, say, the Dungeons Dragons did you prefer? Yeah. Right? There, c- come at us. <laughs> drop it in the comments. But uh, I think, but for, I'm, I'm saying from my perspective, because my math is generally. Oh, we're in the same boat. Yeah. So, so I'm like, for, it just seems way more complicated mm-hmm. from my perspective. Uh, but, yeah. In your own game design, how mm-hmm. much math is there then? Ooh, minimal. <laughs> minimal. Yes. And I made sure to keep it, yeah. So I I do try to go for, um, I like things where they are easy to pick up, but like encourage something that you could master. Right. Right. And so in, in the games that I do try to create is that when you first, you could easily just play through the game and get the story mm-hmm. if you wanted to, depending on like your discussion with the DM and whoever's running it. But if you wanted to get into something a little bit more complicated, if you really did want to create more of like a player profile, mm-hmm. uh, if you wanted your combat to be a little bit more crunchy, then uh, to, to provide mechanics in a way uh, for you as a player and for your DM to help make that happen. Um, so that, that's also, that's fun. Yeah. So having created more than one gaming system, Mm. uh, you obviously have to beta test it, right? Make sure it works. Yeah. So that, that was actually fun. (laughs) So I think, uh, Colt Simulator, that was the first one that I did. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that, that was fun just from the game. And I just wanted to see what that looked like. Game design. But game design. It's so much fun as from this end, from the builder side, right? Uh Um, because I think we can include, as, a, as home brewers, I think we can include v- elements that we like and just throw mm. out stuff that we hate. Yeah. The thing that I love most about TTRPGs is the, that, that lacks from playing online is mm. the ability to sit around a table with friends. Mm-hmm. And through the game, you become much closer friends. You do. I, I think you do. Yeah. And you come <laughs> across situations that you normally like otherwise wouldn't. And then it's kind of fun to just see how people react. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like with the tools that you have and then also personally, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. And of course, you know, whenever somebody designs a character, it is, Mm. it is a character, but it's also an extension of yourself. It it is. Mm -hmm. It's, it's where, 
um yeah you know it's it's that typical like hat switching right thing you get to you, it's kind of it is a little bit like acting in some ways but without the pressure of being on a stage or performing yes, or because doing all hopefully stuff. you're good enough friends that you can just you know oh your absolutely hair down and just do you know be this person yeah and i think just as a dm looking or i guess as another player looking at this player character and how that person role plays them it's neat to see different facets of people's personalities oh yeah mm-hmm. yeah um, I think, I think that is interesting. Cause like sometimes like, I, I think, I think it's kind of fun to just see how <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I wanted to say everything all at once. Right. Um, I think it's interesting cause like daily life is fun, but like, I don't get many opportunities to just like be an evil person or to like scheme and plan yes. or test or like even to test that out or to like, or to try someone, you know, just. Try try on a personality. It's like mm-hmm. changing an outfit, right? And I yeah. think that's the best part of being the the game master, right? The mm. GM behind the, uh, the 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 adventure. Yeah. Um, but what does that say about us, right? Right. <laughs> and I know it's just like I remember uh, what was this? It was um, I forgot the name of the actress. It was from the movie Gone Girl. She had uh, there was an interview about her afterwards, and so in the movie she's this manipulative, conniving, vindictive. Uh, human being Mm -hmm. and um afterwards uh she had she went on an interview and then she's like she's like oh my god Uh, there was a rumor that was going around that she had like had to go into the mental hospital or something like that to try to find herself rumor was wrong okay she did however she did go into into the interview and she was like wow she's like she's like you know i did a good job (laughs) like i did it i know but she's like it wasn't and she's like but outside of that it was um she's like it was i was like she was questioning herself herself because she's like wow she's like am i capable of that and i am i capable of doing that um and so she just kind of like doubted herself for a little bit Mm -hmm. um like just at at the end of like a scene or something uh it just it just got that intense exactly and yeah and i think something like that does kind of carry into each character that we make right into into each of those people Mm. uh into in the people that we bring to the table right yeah as um as the as the master of adventures it's it is it's very pressureful, I feel, mm. a lot of the time. And also, you do a lot of introspection of like, why am I, I guess, the dark path that you set your characters on. Yeah. I start to, I start to get kind of, uh, you know, introspective about. Yeah. 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 Oh. What is, what is the matter with me? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I know. I start to like, especially as a DM, because you have narrative. You're, you're the pilot of the plane. Yeah. Right. And so you have all these other people. You have the the. The players are both the passengers on the plane, mm-hmm. and sometimes they're also the flight attendants, yes. right? And so um, sometimes you're you're trying you're giving your players situations, and you're giving them different things. But like you're you're if if you you got to be careful <laughs> with that because if if all you give your players are just challenge after challenge, dismay after dismay, just dreadful situation after dreadful situation, they're like, wait a minute, I thought we were supposed to have fun. I, I've just been suffering, yeah. you know, for the past few sessions, um, and so you got to There's a there's a certain cadence to mm-hmm. that, and I I think in that line of introspection of just like what are the situations and storylines that that you enjoy and that you like, mm-hmm. and what the what you picture and what you have in your head, you know, may not always necessarily be the same thing once it reaches the table. Right. Right. You know, stories and movies and stuff, there's always the triumph after defeat, you know, like, <laughs> oh, I was defeated at this battle, but the next time I overcame that. Right. Um, I did something better. I learned something about myself and now I'm stronger and I'm here to do that. I think that's the point. As, yeah. a, as a DM, we start to we start to think about what the meaning of adventure is mm. and uh, of life in general, right? What yeah. makes it worth it and what, what, yeah. what gives the players like a sense of you know accomplishment yeah and joy yeah because honestly it's hard to it's hot you know i guess in my experience it's hard to feel those things in real life Mm. which is why tabletop gaming has become so popular yeah so yeah absolutely Mm. yeah i think i think think that's the most important part it's it's going going on going on the adventure and and the journey (laughs) Uh, to that yeah. it's, it's have fun so yeah. thank you so much for coming out and you know being on the show and, yeah, ta- yeah. and geeking out about tabletop board games it is um, definitely a passion huge passion of mine yeah yes oh absolutely and likewise as well yeah, yeah. alright well we'll see you guys next time you were listening to Geek Out and I'm your host Michelle Chang what's your cup of tea what tickles your fancy or floats your boat join us as we share passions from people in Taiwan and around the world every Thursday Bye.